plenty of room. <laughs> Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning and happy new year. Happy new year. We're in day number two. I think we made it, everybody made it through day number one. So, <laughs> um, I am glad that you're here. Um, so we are starting a food drive for the Friendly Center. Everything has been in your bulletin or your newsletter, our online newsletter. And so please remember to bring those items at some point to worship. If you are interested in learning about our, 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 tech, our video system and being a part of you know, running it on a Sunday, the Torrentinos have been running it so far, and we need other people in case we need the extra bodies in case something happens. So um, the more people who know how to use it, the better. I cannot run the system and lead worship. I wish I could be in two spots at one time, but I can't just not possible for me to do that. So we need some help. Um, the Torrentinos will train you on how to do it, so talk to them. Um, and it's just part of us growing our ministry and being, you know, involved. I hope that, oh, Kathleen has a Oh, okay, so on the list of the it should say one jar of peanut butter. It says one jar of peanuts. So. 
So we can change that for next week. Your offering envelopes, if we have not picked them up, are in the entryway. If you, so we are still coming forward for communion. However, if you are uncomfortable coming forward, we still have the little cups that you are, you know, you can individually have. Just um, let our usher know and we can get you one of those. Um, we're trying to make everybody feel welcome and safe in this space during this time. And so far, so good. So let us stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, who sends the word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on the, all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sins and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess, we confess our, our sins sin before you. you. We, we replace compassion with competition. We, we seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us, the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In the name of, in the name of Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is As With Gladness, Men of Old, number 302. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for 
God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives, and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the anthem. Star of 
guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ. For the sake of you Gentiles, for surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of the power. Though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who is in born king of the Jews? For we observed his star rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for whom you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men who learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that the, they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down 
and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Fared, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel <laughs> of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So we're celebrating Epiphany a little bit early. Epiphany's really not until January 6th. But during this time, I thought it was appropriate because it's a brand new year, the second day of a new year, that we talk about what it means to be light. And thinking about light, I thought about all the light sources that we have at our disposal these days. We have the electric lights of a Christmas tree. People display lights on their house. We have flashlights. Probably you have them randomly placed all over your house, in your car. Lights are important for us. They help us see in the dark. But what about the light of Christ in our life? How do we see that light working in our life? Epiphany is a time to sharpen our eyes, to attune our ears, and to develop a sense of what Christ's light is in our life. Our mission statement is all about light. We are to shine the light of Christ in the world and the community. It reminds us how we are being the light. Light was important for the shepherds of Jesus' time when the Magi, the wise men, saw that light in the sky. Most young people growing up have probably never been out of the city to see the wonderful sky that Christ has created and to find that bright star. But if you have, you know the beauty and nature of that natural light, of the twinkling stars that come in all their glory. Those are God's light. The Magi followed the light that led to Jesus. Our light is Christ. We're reminded of that daily through our baptism and through taking part in the communion as we gather together. We're sharing our faith with one another as being the light in the world, showing Christ to others. The wise men ca captured the human spirit in our story. They journeyed a long ways to give three gifts recognizing that they were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we too give gifts because of the light Christ has given us. What are those gifts for you? Maybe some of you have thought, well, I have given my gifts, they're no longer needed. Well, folks, they're still needed because you haven't seen Jesus yet. Your light is still burning. Maybe you're at a point right now in a new year where you're like, what's gonna happen? We kind of are starting the new year with the same thing we ended last year with, of the unknown because of COVID. Where is the light? Where is the light in your life? See, the light was born for us, for you and for me, with no conditions, with no expectations. Yet we are called to be the light, 
to shine in someone's darkest moment. So I had an uncle who loved flashlights. Every time I went over to his house, he always showed me a new flashlight. He had the ones on the head, or the ones in the car, or they were small, or they were big, or you could put them on your keychain. You name it, I think he had it in his life. He loved, I guess, the, to the, the idea of having those different kinds of lights. And upon thinking about this, of being the light, we're being the light in different ways. We are not the same people. We don't have the same personality. We all bring our unique gifts that were given by the Holy Spirit to continue the work in our lives, to be the light in this world. And those can be big lights or little lights. But whatever the light, they're needed. because Christ created you and me to be the light in the world. So today, we begin the season of Epiphany. Our Savior is the light of the world. And now it's time for us to experience epiphanies, both big and small. And may you be the light for the world, for someone, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of the day is the first Noel, well, um, number 300. Please stand as you are able. to serve. 
Now let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly hosts of Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of wanderers, you set the Magi from afar to witness to the mystery and majesty of your birth. Send us into the world with your willing hearts and lips to proclaim your gospel to those we encounter. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, through your spirit you sent you, your all-encompassing love over the cosmos. Bless the stars and guide our way as the night sky invites the earth to slumber. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious God, you send us your spirit to dwell with all people for those things we know and those things we don't know in our hearts, those things which we are going through and things that are unknown to come. Be today with Kristen, Darlene, Sylvester, Heather, Kay, Helen, Wes, Lance, Jean, Kristen, Rebecca, Greg, Bob, and Dorothy. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Guide our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Andrew Taylor, and all church leaders. Comfort all who have been affected by COVID-19 fires, especially the ones in Colorado this past week and all the storms that have ravaged the United States. Give strength and courage to police officers, firefighters, medical professionals, and all serving in our community. Be with our military chaplains and all serving in our military both at home or abroad. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You sent your holy family to seek safety in a new land. Protect all who make similar journeys. Send your guiding spirit to asylum seekers, refugees, and all who journey toward safety. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You show your glory to the saints. We give you thanks for those whose earthly journey has ended and now dwell in you forever. Give us a sign of your continual presence until that day when we arise in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with you. Let us distantly share Christ's peace with one another. As we begin this new year, we're grateful for the blessings that Christ has given us, and especially the financial gifts that we are able to share with our congregation to help out those in our community. So thank you for each gift you give. We continue with communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may um, come forward, um, and I will give you the bread, and then you're asked to be taking a wine or a grape juice. Come, for all is ready. Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, wondrous, wondrous God, God, for Jesus, for Jesus God, God, God with us, in, in the gifts, gifts of bread and wine, and wine as we, we have, have shared, shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' Christ name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you go into this new year, know that Christ's love is with you. His peace and grace surrounds you. He is the king of all creation, the light in this world. 
as you face the challenges of today, tomorrow, and this year. Know that Christ is around you and within you as we gather, until we gather next week as his loving, serving people. Amen. Amen. Our sending him is this little light of mine, and I think all of you know that by now. <laughs> if you went to Sunday school, you have a light, and it's right here, so I want to see it. And the hymn number is 677 if you don't know it. Rejoiced in, in Christ our Savior. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.